if you want my opinion about the situation. No. I'm no, kidding. absolutely not. That's fine. Let's That's just fine. go ahead and I'll, 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 Fuck you guys. Fuck this podcast. And I'll, I'll fucking... You guys can check me out on my new podcast, uh, Fuck About with Rhett. Now loading Blow Up Welcome, everyone, to Bro Up Radio, the only podcast where everything's made up and the points don't matter. I knew. I fucking <laughs> knew that that's what you were going to do. I knew that's what you were going to do. Give me a five, five over the internet. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Like that, right there. Boom. <laughs> All right. I'm your host for the evening, Ian, and I'm joined, as always, by fellow Bro Operatives, Rhett, Chase, and Jesse. Go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. Say hey. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, outside world. <laughs> We have all decided to stay home and eat pizza. Like, That's really mo- what most of us have done for the day. Oh, um, except for I had McDonald's. Oh, mm, lame. Uh, anyway, step, step below everybody else. But um, yeah, so we got ourselves a pretty nice little lineup for the night. Um, show me. <laughs> stop, stop the phone. All right. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us tonight is uh, Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon. <laughs> Captain Falcon, everybody. Uh, Captain Falcon is uh, here to plug his new movie. Um, <laughs> all right, but yeah, sorry. But um, yeah, so uh, we'll just kind of get right into it then. Uh, Jesse, what are some uh, recent comments we've had? Okay, so I'm always glad to share some of these. Uh, we actually just put out a new video, um, the long-awaited uh, episode two of uh, our our second season of Starbound videos. Um, so we had several comments on both YouTube and Reddit reflecting those things. Artisan Virgil says we are very cute and funny and says what uh, most people have said about us, that his expectations on clicking random Let's Play videos on Reddit is generally super low, but this was very funny. Very fun, genuine times had, no weird forced jokes, no internet pandering, and so on. Um, we also had, let's see, um... Yeah, James West says, oh my god, I almost shit my pants laughing at the O Fortuna part. And, uh, let's see, Pete144 says, I may have tossed that salad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But as yes, always, thank you guys so much for your input. You guys are always uh, very kind and positive. Um, and even when you're not, you know, we're just glad to be hearing back from you guys. So thank you so much for watching and sticking around. Um, that's all I've got for the comments this time around, but keep them coming. You know, you can visit us not just on the YouTube comment section, but you can visit us on Facebook and on Twitter to leave your feedback. And the links for that will be, um, below the podcast. If you're watching the podcast online or below the YouTube video, if you're watching on YouTube, that's what I've got. All right. So, um, well, let's kind of get back to a uh, topic we always do. Uh, what's everybody been, uh, Watching, playing, reading here lately. Anything new? Who wants to start this one off? Uh, I'll go. All right, go ahead. Um, I've resubbed World of Warcraft, and that's almost <laughs> all I've done. So <laughs> I've played a ton of WoW, and uh, I have a lot of downtime at work. So I've been playing the original Final Fantasy. Uh, I've been emulating the uh, Dawn of Souls Game Boy Advance version of it, and that's been really fun. I'm almost at the end of it, and then. When I'm not stuck in WoW, I've been playing Rare Replay. I, t- I turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I swear, I hit the buttons and they didn't there's, do the thing. There's no limiting Captain Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> Falcon, you're going to get your segment in a little bit. I need you to calm down. <laughs> He's just sitting over in the corner. It's like, you told me you'd show me your moves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyways, Chase. What was that last thing that you said you were playing, Chase? Uh, Rare Replay. I've been playing through Banjo-Kazooie and... You know, two and everything they've ever made. So. Well, hell yeah! How does that feel on there? Is it just like playing it on the original consoles? Is it weird at all? No, it's it like it's not necessarily like a like an HD version of it, but it clearly looks much better than the sixty four. Okay, yeah, that's like, awesome. Yeah, uh, it's a kind of redone the interface, and so far one gameplay element I've noticed different and. And Banjo is like you in the sixty four version. If you collect notes and then leave the world and come back, then you have to start over with the notes. But in this version, whatever you collect stays collected. So that's kind of weird for me. But other than that, that's what I've been playing. That is cool. All right, neat. Who wants to go next? Rhett. Rhett. Um. Well, 
uh, my life has consisted mainly of World of Warcraft. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as I mentioned in the last episode, I resubbed, and that's literally all I've done in my free time. Um, of course, I work during the day, and then when I get home, I play World of Warcraft. Uh, I don't know if my wife is, is even aware that, that I'm alive anymore. Um, she hasn't seen me for days because I'm playing World of Warcraft. Um, besides World of Warcraft, I've... That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, <laughs> nothing more. Nothing so welcome less. to the World of Warcraft <laughs> podcast. Well, Red, I know you and I have been watching um, uh, Jessica Jones. So yeah. how are you feeling about that? So far, so good. Um, I'm not near as far into it as I would like to be at this point, and I blame World of Warcraft. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're a few. Me and my wife's a few episodes into it. Really, really liking it. Uh, I mean, I loved Daredevil uh, when it was on Netflix. Super psyched for the second season. And Jessica Jones. I mean, it it doesn't like. It's the same kind of intensity, the same kind of enjoyment that I got out of Daredevil. So I'm really liking it so far. Uh, very mature. It's got some seriously mm-hmm. mature themes in it, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the Jessica Jones character to begin with. I know probably more about Luke Cage than I do Jessica Jones. Yeah. But uh, so far, so good. And then, you know, me and my wife both are pretty huge Whovians. So we're excited about we're – we're still trying to come to terms with David Tennant being a villain. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a different, uh, it's a different approach to him than what we're used to. But uh, so far, he's doing a phenomenal job with his role, and the show's really good. I highly recommend it. Definitely should check it out, and I'm excited to, to finish up the rest of the season. Awesome. Um, I'd like to go next, but that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I've been watching Jessica Jones. I've been getting caught up on the last season of Game of Thrones. So, like, any time that I've got time to watch uh, TV, I've been going back and forth between those two things. Uh, sort of like Rhett. I'm, I'm impressed with Jessica Jones, but more than anything, I'm impressed, I'm impressed that I am interested in it because it is – it is different, right? Like, it's not as action-oriented as Daredevil is, but it's still really good. Um, and I just, I kind of can't stop watching it. I find myself going, why do why do I really enjoy this? Because I've got a lot of things that I'm critical about it of, but I am still digging it, and I'm looking forward to finishing it up. The only real game I've been playing lately, uh, hate to sound like a broken record, has been World of Warcraft. Um, <laughs> so, like, when, who was it that resubbed first of us? I've, well, I, I've not like, yeah, you never unsubbed. quit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ian's been subbed for a while. I'm the one that just kind of a few weeks ago was just like, you know what? I've had this itch. I'm going to finally scratch it, scratch it, resubbing. And then chase resubbed shortly after. Hmm. And then Jesse, I think one night we were all just playing and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pay that for was, a month. That was so. the night that I realized that my paycheck was much bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> Oh, I, yeah. I went yeah. ahead and resub that night. So I've been mostly, not necessarily playing World of Warcraft, but preparing to play World of Warcraft. Yeah, so. that's, that's what I was going to say when you're like, man, I've been playing World of Warcraft. And I was like, no, nah, you haven't. Yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> been, uh, I've been making transmogs and getting ready to actually hunt down the transmogs. Uh, just because I'm sort of trying to motivate myself to play it. I've been critical of it in the past, and I'm just looking forward to Legion. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. How about yourself, Ian? Well, um, I've I'm actually been playing a game that not a whole lot of people have heard of. It's a game called World of Warcraft. God damn it! Mm. And um, <laughs> tell us it's about the, that. It, it's really good. It's it, it, it's uh it's um it's uh it's pretty good. It's <laughs> some new genre called a memorpica. A morpica? <laughs> morpica? I don't know if I'm saying that right. But no, it's pretty. It's it, I've, been, I've been playing WoW. Um, <laughs> and uh. That's been most of my time, but it, I have been, with it being the holiday season and me working in retail, I don't have a whole lot of time to do a bunch, yeah. but I do have a couple days off right now, so that's good. So I'm probably going to be playing some WoW. Um, today, all I did was play a game dev tycoon, uh, like a just piece of shit, but <laughs> yeah. well, uh, making, addicting, you know? yeah, making the worst games. Um and uh, I actually have not watched any uh, Jessica Jones yet. I uh, have been wanting to, but just haven't got around to doing it. Um, but kind of co- go- comment on something you said, Rhett. Uh, the first time I actually ever saw David Tennant, he was a bad guy. So it's not necessarily not something too crazy for oh, me. Oh, yeah, because of uh, Harry, oh, Harry Potter. Potter. Right? Yep. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. No, I guess yep. it's the same for me, too, but I didn't really know who didn't David really Tennant was at that right? point. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I didn't, because I was, me and my wife were both really late coming into the Doctor Who thing in the first place. So by the time we watched Harry Potter, or when we first watched his scene in Harry Potter, I didn't know who he was as an actor. So Yeah, when I went back and watched the Harry Potter movies, I was a little blown away by that, too. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, you have you. David Tennant, and you have uh, Edward Cullen in the same movie. <laughs> yeah. There was that, I too. didn't realize he was in Harry Potter, either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um... But yeah, so that's pretty much been me, just mostly playing uh, WoW and a little bit of Game Dev Tycoon. I haven't really been watching much of anything right now, because I'm a just I'm just a piece of shit. I watch YouTube videos. I could I could plug a few oh, channels. I've, <laughs> I've been watching a shitload of YouTube videos about World of Warcraft. <laughs> God that's like all I do. When I'm not playing, I'm watching YouTube videos about World of Warcraft. Oh, I'm, welcome my to the Wildcast, worse now everybody. Than <laughs> yeah, sorry. We're about, we're about to get off this subject. But my addiction, no. for whatever reason, has been worse this time around than it ever was before. Um, Like, honestly, like I was telling Chase earlier, uh, probably the videos I've been watching the most on WoW, uh, not WoW, <laughs> on YouTube. God, that's how much we're into WoW right now. On YouTube, actually, has been Digi No Gaming here lately. Because oh, they've yeah. been the last... In the last, like, two weeks, they've put out, like, 14 videos. <laughs> yeah, that's been so. pretty cool. They are putting out a lot of cool stuff. And they're they're narrowing their topics, right? Because they used to do really broad topics. Yeah, like, the, here lately, there's been a, it's been, like, like today they put out Sonic Generations. Instead of just being, like, Sonic the Hedgehog, it was Sonic Generations specifically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, no, they're no, pretty good. Fault. Huh? Uh, well, I don't know if you heard, but that was my phone that time. So I'll go oh, I didn't that. hear. I didn't even hear it. The okay. victory theme from Final Fantasy. Oh no, it was Zelda, wasn't it? Yeah, that one was Zelda. Sorry, sorry. I don't know anything about games. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> speaking of you know, while on the subject of you know watching things and being on YouTube and stuff like that, uh, been a couple of uh, pretty big trailers come out here lately. Yeah, uh, there there so have uh, uh for quite a couple a few. of pretty big uh, superhero movies. Um guess the first one we'll kind of get into here if uh, no one else has anything to add about what they've done here recently no uh, good yeah uh, i think the first one we'll get into is uh batman versus superman oh, uh, the new trailer the new trailer that just uh launched a couple days back uh jesse what were your thoughts okay well i i was excited to watch it but i'll, I'll say this right ahead like i there were a bunch of people that were sort of frustrated with this uh trailer giving away too much and I know that that's a problem with movie trailers is sometimes by the time the movie comes out, especially lately, there are so many individual pieces of promotional material that we've seen most of the cool parts of the movie. And that's really frustrating, right? And so by the time I saw that the trailer was out, it was somebody complaining about it having too much stuff in it. So I basically had the trailer spoiled for me in a weird way. Like, like the trailer itself reveals a lot of things that I would have preferred to have not seen until the movie, but I also had um, the trailer spoiled for me as well. But uh, So I will go ahead and give you guys a heads up. If you want to avoid uh, what you would consider be spoilers for Batman vs. Superman, you might want to skip ahead in the video, because... I'll go ahead and say right now, there was some content in the trailer that I would have preferred not to have seen until the actual movie, and that's the reveal of a character that some people were considering might be in that, which is, which may or may not be Doomsday. I know a lot of us have been debating on whether or not that's actually Doomsday or not. I think it is. Um, some people on the internet seem to think that it's actually... Um, oh, God, what was his name? Okay, so there's a character called... Well, shit. I don't remember what it's called, but I would love to get your opinion of this trailer, having all seen it, while I try to think of what that character's name was, because some people don't think it's Doomsday. Uh, I'm one of those people. Yeah. Like, no, I don't necessarily, I don't think it's Doomsday, but I don't think he looks anything like the Doomsday I'm used to. Yeah. Like, I, like when, when he came out in the, I, I didn't even know people were calling that Doomsday until I heard Jesse say it, and I was just like, what? the fuck are you serious because like, like i thought it was just some random monster for the movie that you know they had made through you know the dna or whatever and i was just like he doesn't look nothing like doomsday he looks like just some crazy monster with laser eyes like i, I don't i don't know well the biggest um, uh, the biggest thing to me is and i'm not trying to cut anybody off right were you about to say something i thought i heard uh, you. i i started to say something well yeah you go, go ahead, ahead then 
I, I was just going to say, to me, like he looks enough like Doomsday for it to either be Doomsday or maybe be a precursor to Doomsday. And that's basically it, yeah. Like, Well, what I heard, because I didn't know this about Doomsday's character, but apparently it gets stronger the more he gets hit, right? And uh, and so that, to me, leads me to believe that those like spikes protruding out of him might get bigger and bigger through the course of the fight, which would lead him to look more like Doomsday. But um, hell it would also out. make more season, more reason as to why Wonder Woman just shows up and like bitch slaps him at the beginning of it, and then like, oh, well, that's not Doomsday. But then all of a sudden he gets he's even more powerful. Okay, it may be Doomsday. <laughs> well, see, that's why I, that's why I threw it away as it not being Doomsday because when he first shows up on screen, like my thir- my first thought was Doomsday, and then immediately my first thought was like, oh god, this is Spider Man three all over again because they're st- just cramming so much shit into one movie. Mm-hmm. But then. You know, Wonder Woman does show up and just kind of smacks him away or whatever. And then you have the, the scene, is she with you? Well, I thought she was with you, that thing. So whenever Wonder Woman showed up and just t- dismissed him, I was like, okay, well, whatever the fuck that was. Obviously, it couldn't be Doomsday if Wonder Woman just, you know, got rid of him that fast. Which, you know, might just been a knock him out of the way, lead on to the big battle or whatever. But I just, I hope it's not Doomsday. Because I have high hopes for this movie. And my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my hopes have been growing more and more uh, uh, over the past few months. Uh, and I feel like as with what we have seen up before this trailer, I feel like there was enough substance for the movie already. I just really hope they're not, I don't know. I have to wait and see it to see to kind of really find out about it, but I hope it's not doomsday. I hope it doesn't get brought in that soon, unless it's just like a last second thing that kind of sets up the justice league movie or something. I don't know, but I feel like putting, Doomsday and it's just a little too much. Yeah, um, like that's well, that's kind of the the feel the trailer has to me is like all these trailers leading up to this have been very grim and serious, and now this one like it, it feels like it gave away too much of the plot and already is giving me that same fear that you have of oh my god Spider Man three of like this is taking a really weird turn towards the end. Yeah. See, I've always kind of I've had a very uh, different. Well, I don't want to say different, but I've had a pretty strong opinion about this movie since the get go, and that's been the fact that I think it has the ability of being a very good movie, but I am so prepared for it to be awful. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like I hope it's not. I really hope it's not. But I've I've had I've had the mindset that it definitely has the ability to be really really bad, and. Honestly, this trailer maybe helped a little bit, but it didn't save it in my mind. Um, the The trailer itself, in my opinion, I thought it was a really good trailer until Lex came in. Uh, yeah. Lex, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name, the guy playing him? Uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg, yeah. Jesse Eisenberg derailed that trailer, in my opinion. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of excited about him being Lex, but after that trailer, I'm just like, he's, his voice is too high. He just I, doesn't, he, he, uh, I don't get what version of Lex they're trying to portray in this movie. Like I'm the same way. I thought the trailer looked fine up until he comes in and, you know, I guess whenever they first cast him and I saw him with hair, I was like, okay, I guess it's just a, a young Lex or something, but I don't know. It's like the way they, they put him in the trailer and the way that Bruce and Clark both knew him already. It's like, he's already the established Lex Luthor that we're aware of i don't know like you know maybe i'm missing something here maybe jesse maybe you know more about it than i do yeah i've heard that this is not the lex luther we know i've heard that this is lex luther jr like i've i've heard lex luther senior is dead in this universe oh okay well that i hadn't heard yet and if that's the case i can kind of get behind that idea yeah because i don't i don't yeah because if this jesse eisenberg is playing like the lex luther that we're familiar with I think it's they not him, yeah. totally missed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they're like, don't get me wrong. I have had a very back and forth relationship with how I feel about adaptations of established stories. Like at one point I was like, no, just do a straight adaptation. People liked it the way it was. Just adapt it that way. And on the other hand, now that I've grown a little bit, I'm just like, well, I don't know. People should have a little bit of artistic liberty. So what I'm seeing right here is a person's interpretation of Lex Luthor, which is not accurate to any portrayal of the character. Right. But yeah, like, oh, well, yeah, go ahead real quick. I was going to say, my, my mindset has always been if you're going to do like an adaptation of something, like especially like a comic book adaptation movie, it needs to draw enough inspiration from the comic to be somewhat close and have a lot of the uh, charm and the same charms and stuff, but still tell its own original story in its own like, you know, interesting way, which I think, um, uh, like the like the Amazing Spider-Man movies, I think they did that. 
Mm-hmm. I think they were they they pulled enough from the original comics to still be, um, you know, have all that charm. Like you know, you had your witty Spider Man, and you know, uh, Gwen Stacy, and all that. Like I think it had a lot a lot of the original charms, but it was it still it had its own story, and yeah. it was one of those things where we all knew she was gonna die at the end of the second movie, but we didn't know for well, a fact. <laughs> we were all just like, you know, she might live, you know, because because it wasn't in a straight up adaptation. And don't and don't get me started on how much I love that particular movie because yeah, like, like, I've it, got a lot of problems with those two movies, but that did me a lot of good. Mm-hmm. But but that but that point I'm trying to make is I feel like it should draw enough to keep all those charms but still be its own thing, and I'm not seeing that with this series. Uh, I think the series is a really, really often left field. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of the things I'm kind of mad about. Like uh, like even if it is like even if Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Junior, I still don't like it. <laughs> Trace bounce off of that because I know I've heard you talk about that. About Lex, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Red about it. You know, like I think, if, if, if he's not um, Lex Junior, then they've really missed the mark. If, if they're going for the one we're used to now, if they want, if they're just trying to make their own unique Lex, then well, they've, they're there because <laughs> he's completely different. You know, he's, he's kind of goofy. He's kind of being funny with them. He's not, he's not like. He doesn't feel like super villain smart guy. You know, you know he's, what it is? Sorry. You know what it reminds me of, though? Um, so we were talking about uh, uh, the purple man in fucking Jessica Jones, Kilgrave. And I, as I'm watching it, I'm just like, this doesn't feel like a unique character. It just feels like David Tennant being bad. Like, it just, it just feels like he's just David Tennant playing the same character he always plays, just witty British man. But he's he's evil, and that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from Jesse Eisenberg here. Is he's, he's just evil, he's Jesse just evil Jesse Eisenberg. Not, <laughs> he's, he's not evil, everybody's gonna agree uh, with me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not everybody's gonna e- agree with me on that. But like, that's sort of the vibe I was getting. Is this is just like, hey, let's let's see what Jesse Eisenberg does. This oh, he's an annoying, quirky guy. I guess that's Lex Luthor now. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah it's, I don't know. It's strange, but uh, something else that that we hadn't talked about from the trailer yet. Uh, like, I, I don't know whose side you guys are on. Uh, I, I can pretty much guess, I think. But, uh, like, I, I was really hoping the movie would have a clear-cut winner and that they wouldn't go with the whole, oh, well, at the end, let's just be friends and beat the real bad guy. Yeah. But they kind of have to do that, and I get that, because they, like, they can't just have Clark crush Batman's head <laughs> and, yeah. and then that be the end of the movie and be like, he won, or vice versa, you know? Like... I I really want Bruce to to just win and and show Superman what's up and <laughs> just be like you know you everyone fears you but like I can't remember the line Jesse he, he says oh, yeah. he's gonna make him bleed or whatever well yeah in the trailer he's just like do you bleed you will and then, yeah and yeah. then I've referenced you know the the line that they used to announce it which was uh, I want you to remember the man who beat you yeah you yeah. see that's that's the movie I want I'm I'm just sort of. I don't know. I don't know what I, how I feel about the whole Doomsday thing until I actually see the whole movie, I guess. But like, like I said, they kind of have to show up at the end and be friends, and I guess form the Justice League. I don't know. Um. Yeah, and I I agree. Like I I I know I've been defending the movie, being like, no, that won't happen. And then I saw the trailer, and I was just like, God damn, that's exactly what happened. It's really corny, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um. I think one more thing that I really want to point out uh, that's a focal thing to me is, you remember how I couldn't remember the name of this villain earlier, and I told you I'd come back to it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and post the link to where you guys can see it. Uh, but this is uh, Wraith. Okay, this is a newly introduced villain, um, unless it's a reimagining of an older villain. But Wraith is uh, a villain who appeared in Superman Unchained, and he is made from Kryptonian DNA. And that sounds a lot more like what this is in uh, the actual trailer. Um, he doesn't have like pronounced spikes like Doomsday. He's actually made from Kryptonian DNA, which would explain why he's got laser vision and things like that. But at the same time, I've heard of versions of Doomsday being made from Kryptonian DNA. So like, 
I'm not necessarily sure what to look at here, but there are some people on the internet who think that this is Wraith instead of Doomsday. I am currently of the opinion that there's no one way in hell that it's not going to be named Doomsday. Like, they might be combining elements of the character, but I don't think that, the, that they're going to show that in the trailer and then turn around and be like, oh, no, that's Wraith. <laughs> But, Let me ask you this, because yeah. um, you keep up with the new Fifty Two pretty, yeah. I kinda, do. Or okay, um, is would would you say that the Wraith thing is he new Fifty Two exclusive? Because these these all these pictures of them look pretty. These recent. are the all of these pictures are from um, Scott Snyder and Jim Lee's Superman Unchained, which is from um, the new Fifty Two. I only said I wasn't sure if he was a new character to sort of cover my own ass in, in case I was wrong. But oh, I'm, did say I'm, that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he is New 52 exclusive, that he's a brand new well, character. Would you say he was, whatever his story is, might have been one of the, is one of the biggest arcs in Superman's New 52 uh, era? Or... I'll tell you so right I'm just now. Asking, sucks. I'm asking maybe if he's real popular, if it's a real popular thing, then it very well could be that, they're, that they are putting him into... Maybe that's him in the movie. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm the person to ask that, if only for the fact that I stopped reading this book about three issues in because I thought it was garbage. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't super <laughs> into it. I feel like a lot of people liked it, but I was just like, well, okay. In issue one, Superman's just like, oh, no, my X-ray vision isn't good enough. Better go Gamma. <laughs> And then he uses his Gamma vision, and it's just like, great. It's the 40s again. We're just making up bullshit as we go along. So yeah, like. Superman. Yeah, like I, I'm not down for that OP Superman. Like I like a more reserved Superman. So I, I tuned it out, even though I really like Scott Snyder as a writer. But yeah, so I don't know what to expect from this monster. I still think it's just Doomsday. I don't know if he's going to escalate to a more Doomsday-looking appearance, but I'm still pretty sure that's him. I don't know. Doomsday. Um, I just hope it's a lead-in into the Justice League movie. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just saying the after you said the whole thing about Wraith and me looking at pictures of him and stuff, I now think he's Wraith. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I do too. I'm looking at this picture right here that that's, uh, looks like a cover from Superman of Chain where he's beating Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman's ass. All three, those three people in particular, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it and he's got like red shit coming out of his eyes. And that kind of looks like the guy in the movie. Because <laughs> yeah, the thing is, like from from what I understand about um, Doomsday. Like, I don't know of Doomsday ever having heat vision. He might, but, like, that's not a particularly Doomsday trope. So, uh -huh. like, it makes more sense, especially because of the way that they frame it in the film that he's being made from Zod, that this is more aligned with Wraith. But I still think they're going to call him Doomsday, if only for the fact that that's well, going to be easier for them. My thing is, you can't have Doomsday without having the death of Superman. Yeah. And you can't have the death of Superman without having the fucking Justice League yet. Because, yeah. I mean, that, that's a big thing. Like, the funeral of Superman with the whole the, the issue cover with the Justice League. and You know you know what I'm talking about. Mm. And that's a big thing. So you can't start the death of Superman story arc without even having the Justice League. Without even having a good chunk of the heroes even introduced yet. That's my thing. I mean, they might just fucking just fuck the pooch on that and just do whatever they want with, with it. But... That's my thing. So, fuck the pooch is a much better version of that, by the way. I agree. <laughs> no, yep. um, you know what you reminded me of? There's actually a really good Max Landis video, which I will provide if, uh, if I'm making a traditional video for this as an annotation or something like that. But, uh, in wherein Max Landis outlines how he was approached by DC to write for Superman, but he ended up being too busy. So he was like, so this is what I was going to write. And he outlines how he would have actually introduced the Justice League by having Doomsday attack. Like, And he talks about how in his version of, of the Superman story, all these heroes were going to be established, but they wouldn't have started working together yet. They would just be sort of on each other's radar. And then when Doomsday attacks, no individual superhero can beat him. And so all of a sudden they're formed into an impromptu alliance, if only to try and tear this motherfucker down. And Doomsday ends up, like, seriously injuring and nearly killing several superheroes before they finally manage to take him down. And I can't help but look at this and go, this is Max Landis' Doomsday story. Like, and I don't know if Max Landis had anything to do with this, but he has been saying, I've got a lot of big projects on the way. <laughs> so, like, I don't know if he had anything to do with this writing at all. But that's what hey, it's reminding just, He might just inadvertently inspired it or yeah, something. Yeah, perhaps. But, um, again, though, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, though, I mean, you're just going to introduce Doomsday and then have the Justice League form to defeat him and they just defeat him and everything's fine. Like, in my mind, if you don't kill off Superman with a Doomsday as, with Doomsday as the main villain, then you're just totally missing the mark. And I don't think we're anywhere close to that yet as far as the DC 
uh, cinematic universe is concerned. And I agree. I, I agree, and that goes back to what I was saying about how you need to stay, like, you need to draw enough inspiration from the comics to keep the charms, but also still be an original story. And I agree. Um, like, it, it, first of all, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about how this this whole thing seems like a little bit in left field to me. It's just strange to me how apparently the Batman's a semi-retired Batman who's been who had been doing it for a while and stuff, and Superman's been Superman for a couple years, and all of a sudden they now get cut forming a group together to fight this thing. Like it's just really strange to me. Yeah, and, and uh, go ahead. don't get me wrong, yeah. I will probably be there the night it opens. Yeah. But I'm pumped. I'm a, I'm a, I'm still incredibly pumped. I feel like it, it. There's a chance it's gonna be corny as fuck, but like I'm still so fucking pumped. Oh, me too. I've got I've got one big question though. Mm. How if this movie is shit? If this movie is just awful, how does DC react to it? Oh. I, if if this bombs, in my opinion, I. Th- like Marvel's so far ahead of them at this point, it's it's not even funny. I don't <laughs> think that there's a chance of this bombing. I think there's a chance of this being an incredibly lucrative film that is a critical failure, and they will just move forward anyway. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they will yeah. just move forward, try and repair any mistakes they made with the next movie. Because you remember, a lot of people's criticisms of Man of Steel was just this isn't my fucking Superman. My Superman doesn't fucking kill people, and he doesn't leave this kind of destruction behind. And then I was sitting here going, you know, the only way to make this better with the next film is have them address that. And sure enough, that's a huge theme of Batman versus Superman is how Superman's recklessness has impacted the world. And I'm just like, you see, that's what they did. I don't know if this was part of the grand plan all along or not. So, like, if they, if they, in the same way, upset fans with this movie, I think their only option is to try and make it better with the next one. Because, like, we can't keep rebooting this shit. We got to put our feet down and move forward. I, I completely agree. But the only thing that, that, that bothers me about that is that if this movie does fail. Mm-hmm. The everything else they've got in the pipe is also so far in left field that if this movie fails, I don't see how they how they fix it with the with like with like Suicide Squad and 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 stuff like that. Like I just it, like the Jared Leto Joker. Don't get me wrong, I like it now, mm-hmm. but it's still so far in left fucking field. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, okay. so. I think that's but, most of what we want to say about that, right? Yeah, I think that kind of wraps that one up. Um, the other trailer that uh, we've that's been going around, I think it came out yesterday. Mm-hmm. Or the, yeah, yesterday. Uh, X Men Apocalypse. X Men. It was one man. X Men Apocalypse. <laughs> he was once a man, but now he is Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much sums up everything you need to know about this movie going into it. Is, uh, yeah, moving on. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so no, X-Men week. Apocalypse. <laughs> uh, so, um, Chase, what were your thoughts about it? Um, I, I don't know, really. Like, I've only watched the trailer once, and it was just a little while ago. But, like, I'm glad that, that they changed the way he looks from the, the ending of yeah. the last film. Absolutely. Yeah, he he looked like Ivan Ooze. Now he actually looks a little bit more like Apocalypse. Um, I I don't know. Like I, I don't know a lot about this movie yet. Like, do you guys know if it's supposed to be like in the past, like the last one, it's, or is it is it both? Yeah, again? I know. It's uh, so the last movie was set during the '60s or '70s. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. This movie's set during the '80s. Okay, so it's, it's just picking up from there. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I agree with what you're saying. Like you know, when they released a lot of that promotional stuff, or uh, there were two problems with uh with do or, no, I'm getting confused with Apocalypse. Right, I started to say Doomsday. Um, there are two <laughs> problems with him is that was his color palette was all wrong. Like you said, he was purple. Um, and he doesn't look like Doomsday. He's got like a weird hood thing going on. He looks way more Egyptian themed, which is cool and all, but he didn't look like Apocalypse. Um. And so they did the one thing that they could have done, which is they've they've either color corrected it back blue, or those early promotional pictures were just washed out in the first place because the the color scheme looks spot on and the posters look spot on. Outside of that, though, this is one of those trailers that like there wasn't a whole lot in it that actually got me pumped up, right? Like yeah, I agree. I agree with that completely. 
Yeah, um, there were a few things I saw throughout the trailer that that made me a little bit more excited than I was. But like to compare, like to compare it with like Batman vs Superman, for example, I am more excited about Apocalypse. Right. But I'm not super excited about either war, either or. Um, yeah, like uh, to be honest. Uh, well, like, then let's talk about a couple of the casting choices, right? So well, we mentioned this earlier in in the the planning was um I don't remember who it was. It was like I'm not really sure about Sansa Stark being uh being Jean Grey. Yeah, that was me. I don't. I'm not. I'm not feeling her, but eh. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that I was totally down for it, right? But her first line, like, I kind of feel like she forgets to not have a British accent, right? Like, mm. like she, she when she starts speaking, I, I thought I heard the hint of her accent, and then the, the rest of her line is more, like, Americanized. And I'm just like, that was weird. I don't know if it's because I'm used to Sansa and Game of Thrones or what, and I, I'm referring to her by her fucking character's name. I don't even remember her damn actress's name. But, like, that's a little weird to me, right? Um, outside of that, I don't know. And we were talking about we're not even sure if uh, Wolverine's going to be in this one. Like, Yeah, well, I mean, I looked at the um, cast listing earlier because I was, I was the one. We were talking about that before we started recording. And I looked at the cast listing, and I didn't see Hugh Jackman listed. Like, I couldn't remember, because I know he's only signed on for a couple more movies, including Wolverine 3. And I couldn't remember if this was one of them. And he wasn't listed in what I was looking at. So I don't think he's going to be in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anything, probably like a small cameo of some sort. Like, maybe like an outro sequence promoting the Wolverine movie that's coming out. You know, yeah, well, maybe they, they just re- tell Apocalypse to go fuck himself. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, maybe they just recycle the scene from... Uh, uh, first class, where it's like, go yeah. fuck yourself. <laughs> I, I'm looking at his filmography on his Wikipedia page, and the movie's not listed there either, and it, it already has uh, some 2016 films. I mean, that kind of the- makes sense to me, because, like, you know, they rebooted their own little universe, so, like, it can be fair that they just haven't picked him up yet, right? Like, it's just yeah. not, mm-hmm. it's not time right. to get him yet. But, What's, uh, uh, Chase, while you're on that page, uh, besides Wolverine 3, is there any other X-Men related works that's that's listed there? No. The, oh, okay. the last X-Men thing listed here is Days of Future Past. Uh, well, do they have Wolverine 3 on there? No. Well, see, I mean, bizarre. it is Wikipedia. It's not entirely reliable. Right, right. Like, but... Usually they're pretty good about filmography sections, and yeah. uh, neither one of those are here. Okay. Alright, cool. Well, we don't have an awful lot to say about X-Men then, I feel. Um... I will go and say this. We're going to save most of our discussion about Civil War until another podcast. Um, but I did want to go ahead and mention it real quick uh, and get just like real brief attitudes towards the most recent trailer from everybody. Um, I'm excited about it. I actually just uh, just went and watched Ant-Man. Uh, I was a little late to that. I don't know if all of y'all have seen it. Have y'all, have y'all seen Ant-Man? I haven't. I started to watch it the other day, and I, I haven't. I, I have not seen it yet. I haven't either. Oh. Okay, well, I'm the only one then. Well, um, I went and watched Ant Man. It was a lot better than I expected it to be. I was kind of, I mean, I was kind of excited about it, but it ended up being a lot better than I expected it to be. And it, it's, it's second secret ending mm-hmm. after credits does go into Civil War. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was really neat. Um, and very exciting. And we can, then watching- um, we can talk if you want to talk about that. That's fine. I- I'm okay with. The spoiling that it's, it's up to Chase it's not it's honest honestly it's not that big of a spoiler. yeah i've already um, i've already heard about what it is like yeah all it is is it's the scene from the tr- that we've seen in the civil war trailers where falcon and cap are sitting there in the same room and and are standing there in the same room with uh winter soldier like sitting on the floor mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. that scene and uh cap's pretty much just like uh he's just like if we just call tony and Falcons is like he won't believe us. So he's like, especially with the accords in, in in action, he he there's nothing he could do even if he did believe us. And uh, he, Caps is like, then what do we do? And Falcons is like, I know a guy, referring to Ant Man. Mm-hmm. So okay, c- kind of interesting, kind of yeah. a small thing, but interesting. Um, Red, so I, but no but that, be, that all that being said, the trailer itself, I like it. Uh, I'm a little disappointed because Civil War is one of my favorite. Comic arcs of all time, mm-hmm. and uh, it's not anything like it. Yeah, it like, looks it looks like an entirely new piece of fiction. It does. But that with. being said, going into it 
knowing that it's something different, it looks all right. Red, how do you feel about it? Well, uh, I think it looks good. Um, I will agree. I mean, immediately after the trailer started for me, I mean, it doesn't take long to realize that they're they're completely they're not going along with the source material, the the Civil War arc from the comic books. <clears throat> uh, they're kind of doing their own thing with it, but um. I think it looks good. One of my biggest worries about it, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I've been a little little sick today, so my voice How is a little messed up. dare you be sick. I know, right? <laughs> on podcast day of all days. Goddamn uh, unprofessional <laughs> behavior. Fuck me, right? <laughs> but uh, one of my biggest um, worries about it was that it's, it's Captain America Civil War, but I always thought it was going to be... I mean, it, it looked like it was just going to be basically the next Avengers film. Mm-hmm. So I was worried about it, you know, being a Captain America movie when it looked like it was going to be the next Avengers film, but the trailer kind of played it off. Like it is a very dominant Captain America film and everybody else is just more or less supporting care, you know, yeah. Extra characters. So I, according to the, from the way the trailer looks, it looks like it is going to be a dominant Captain America film. Looks like it's going to be a good Captain America film. Uh, I, I, I thought it looked, Really good. Um, had some had some parts in the trailer that kind of hit you up in the feels, you know, where to get that one <clears throat> that one scene where uh, mm-hmm. where Captain know. America is like, "Sorry, Tony, I, it's not that I want to, but he's my friend." And then Tony's like, "So was I," you know. And I was like, "Ah," oh, you know, I, I almost don't want to watch it because it looks like that's going to hit me like right in the heart, yeah. you know. So uh, it it looks good. I'm excited about it. I'd love to bounce off that. I'll ask Chase his input first, though. Uh, Chase, how do you feel about it? I know you've have you read Civil War, or have you just had us like fill you in on it? Yeah, I was. I was what I was going to say is I'm probably the only one here who has not read Civil War. I know a lot about it just from hearing you guys talk about it back and forth, just you know, outside the podcast. But uh, as far as the trailer goes, I, I think it looks like it's going to be good. So like. Honestly, I won't know a whole lot of difference. Like when yeah. something happens in the movie, and everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, that didn't happen in the comics." I'll be like, "Oh well, <laughs> I, I didn't read it, <laughs> so it'll yep. be fine for me." You have to approach the movie thinking, just knowing it's gonna be a completely new original story. If you approach it wanting to be like the comic book, you're gonna be you're just gonna have a bad time. Yeah, like, <laughs> and that 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 that's actually something I wanted to state real quick. Was uh, this entire podcast that when we've been talking about these trailers, I've been like, "Oh, you have to stay pretty," you know decently you know true to the source material but you can change it up this obviously is not that way but i will give this one an exception because this is like the sixth movie of the series <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. like they've been building it this way there's no way they could do it the right way mm-hmm. at this point but they did it they're doing it well for yeah. what they're working with in my opinion. there's no reason to like not have faith in it because the cinematic universe has had an outstanding story all around so far like the all the stories from all the movies and the the completely like um connected story and all that i feel like it's been very entertaining very well done i mean i get excited for each new marvel film you know i'm generally excited for each new one so i think they've done a well, g- uh, good job with that one thing that i will say bouncing off what you said earlier read about that that feelsy bit is one thing that i basically heard is that the the directors and writers of of this film or maybe it was the producers or somebody somebody who had their fingers in the pudding um was <laughs> <laughs> i knew y'all weren't going to let me slide by that with that one um somebody involved altered this story and was just like i don't want this to be as politically motivated i want this to be more of a personal dispute between tony and cap and that's clearly what it is in the trailer right it's not Mm -hmm. it's not so much about the political ramifications of it or even conflicting ideologies it's more about like deeply rooted personal involvements that are conflicting with one another right and I've got mixed feelings about yeah, that. You know, like that's like, a, like, it's a bummer, that, right? Like, it is kind of a bummer. I'm kind of looking forward to it. But something I said when they first ever even hinted at doing a Civil War movie, I was like, I love comic book Tony Stark. No, 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 movie Tony Stark. I hate comic book Tony Stark. Yeah. And the reason I hate comic book Tony Stark is because of Civil War. Mm. So the only way Civil War could be good, in my opinion, this is something I used to say, was if it made me hate movie Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. But I honestly feel like I'm gonna be more sympathetic to <laughs> movie Tony Stark, and yeah. that like that that at first I was like, well, that sucks, but now I'm just like, eh. you know, like I feel like it's again, it is a different, it's a definitely a different take on it, yeah. And I think I'm getting over it, yeah. I think they're doing what they can with what they have, 
and we'll have to wait and see. Kind of like with uh, with some of these other trailers, is that from what we've seen, I don't think these, this movie is necessarily meeting our expectations, but this is only what we've seen. So, um, you know, maybe wait until it gets closer to time. I know a lot of people are worried about that Spider-Man reveal, how much uh, screen time he's going to have, how important is he going to be, and we just won't know until closer to time, or very well, we may not know until we've seen the movie. I I will say this about Spotty, though. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was a video posted on Facebook earlier. Uh, What's the name of the actor? Tom Holland? Yeah, something like that. It showed him, like, working, like, doing some, some crazy gymnastic shit. Mm-hmm. getting ready for this film and he's he's put in some work and he's gonna be able to like i mean it looks like he's gonna be able to do like his own stunts and all kinds of stuff because yeah. he was he was showing out in that video and that that gets me excited i mean somebody i mean he's obviously taking the role very very seriously he might be being forced to under contract by the way he's doing it yeah and it, i think he's gonna uh, it looks badass. like he's gonna play a pretty good spider-man and i'm so. excited for that i really mm-hmm. and and they've also already came out and said that Spotty and Ant-Man are going to be more of the comic relief in this too, from what I've read. So that's, that's cool too. That being said, we also haven't seen Ant-Man in any of the trailers either, even though I just got to tell you about how the secret ending directly went into civil war. So Mm. that's a little strange to me as well, but I'm sure time will tell. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely a two part conversation. We'll be able to talk more about this once the Spotty reveal happens and some more trailers come out. We'll have more uh, uh, more oh, to yeah. talk about before the movie actually comes Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Okay. Chase, did you have anything else before we move on? I was going to say, as far as Spider-Man goes, I hope he's a cross between uh, the two previous ones because there's problems with both of them, which we won't get into right now because that would take too long to explain. But we'd love to just talk your ears off on it another time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we're just going to, I guess, move on right on along now. Um, go into the... Uh, Game Awards. Yeah. Uh, yeah anybody, uh, did y'all, y'all check out the Game Awards? So Chase, I think you're the only <laughs> one that watched the whole thing, right? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. I mean, I was playing WoW the whole time, go figure, but I watched the whole thing. <laughs> I, like, I was lucky enough to be in a Skype conversation when Chase was watching it, so Chase kind of filled me in as the as the awards ceremony went on. Mm-hmm. So I heard about it through, uh, <laughs> through just conversation. Yeah. And I, I was at work, but I was keeping up with it. I caught the tail end. I think the biggest thing because there's there's several things to talk about, you know, like, you know, Witcher 3 game of the year, not all of us have played it, but I'm sure it deserves its merits, you know. And there is a lot of other news, but I think the biggest thing that I want to talk about uh is this Kojima thing. So, Ian, fill us in on all this. Fill our viewer, viewers in on this. I I don't know if I'm necessarily the best to fill us in. Uh so uh, I'm gonna actually let someone else take. I'm a, that. I'm, a I'm a Konami fanboy. Mm-hmm. I mean, my two favorite franchises are Konami, so I could I could do this. Yeah, go ahead. So let us know this uh, <laughs> this that happened. Well, basically, uh, you know, I think reports had came out earlier that Kojima wasn't in attendance to the Game Awards, and you know, Metal Gear Solid Five was up for a few. You know, they were nominated for a few categories, and. You know, I think everybody like, would like to have seen Kojima accept it. I mean, they had acknowledged that Keith or Sutherland was, or Kiefer Sutherland was was there, but uh, I think everybody would like to have seen Kojima there in case he needed to accept any awards. Um, they came back from break, I believe, mm-hmm. and the host of the show, uh, what's his name again? Somebody fill me in. Um, Je- uh, Jeff Kylie. Keely, yeah, Jeff Keely. Keely, Kylie, yeah. He 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 had the mic. He was he was talking. And he said. Uh, you know, before we get on, move on to the rest of the game awards. Uh, I just like to tell everybody a little bit of something what's going on. Uh, Hideo Kojima has been legally has been approached by Konami's lawyers and has been legally uh, what's prohibited the word? prohibited from attending the awards ceremonies. So you know, we would all like, love to see him here, but unfortunately, Konami will not allow that to happen. And of course, that you know, he got met with like boos out of the crowd and all sorts of stuff. I mean, he pretty much just flamed Konami in one yeah. little go there. Um, if you want my, my opinion about the situation, no, I'm no absolutely not. that's fine. Let's just go ahead. Fuck you guys. Fuck this podcast. <laughs> and I'll, I'll fucking, you guys can check me out on my new podcast. Uh, fuck about with Rhett. That's what the name of the podcast is going to be. Fuck about with 10 second. Um, <laughs> please tell us what you think about it. No, nah, when it first happened. Okay. Cause I'm, like I said, I, both of my favorite game franchises of all time, Metal Gear, Castlevania, are Konami properties. So I've been a pretty big fan of Konami for, especially since I've been a Metal Gear fan. Uh, so when this first happened, at first I was like, man, good on you. Cause Konami's been, been fucking off here. They've been, I feel like from what we've gathered, they've been treating Kojima wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So I was like, good on you, man. They they deserved a little 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 hate, little whatever, whatever yeah. you just dished their way. And then like at first I was okay with it, and after I put more thought into it, I'm like, that was actually really unprofessional for him to do what he did. You see, like that's it's, it's a real bittersweet situation for me. That's what really surprised me about it. Because, like, all this shit that's going around, like, everyone's real hush-hush about it. Konami's like, no, he still works for us. He's just on vacation. Like, there is very clearly a non-disclosure act or something similar. You know, there's there, there's there's some sort of, like, non-disclosure style agreement of we don't want people talking about this. So for a journalist to just straight up be like, so we've spoken with Konami's lawyers, or we've spoken with <laughs> Kojima, and Konami's lawyers specifically said he can't come. Like, that kind of was just like... Like, that's throwing... I, I know they deserve it, right? But it's very much throwing Konami under the bus. And it's not mm-hmm. its not what I expected out of a games journalist, right? And, and I don't yeah. have a problem with it. It just threw me for a loop, right? I personally am, like... If I was in the same situation that Jeff Keeley, or Kylie, I haven't pronounced his last name, was in, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah, and... He have- is actually a very, very good friend of Hideo Kojima. Yeah, like they that. are very close friends, and if if I found that out, like if I was like at this, if I was hosting this award ceremony and I found out my friend couldn't come because the company that he's given you know blood, sweat, and tears to mm. over the years, they saying fuck you to him, pretty much, I'd be pretty pissed about it, and yeah. I'd be like, yeah, they they said he couldn't come. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, and I understand that. But, like, an argument that can kind of be made, I mean, it didn't look like we were ever going to get any more Metal Gear or Castlevania anyway, because I've been saying for a while now, Konami is just a slow-sinking ship, you know? Yeah. It feels like it feels like Metal Gear Solid Five was pretty much their last hurrah with video games. Uh, but, I mean, if there was ever, ever a chance of us getting more Metal Gear or more Castlevania, it's not going to happen as long as Konami's getting just thrown under the bus like they are so as me you know me being such a fan of those franchises i mean i would love to see more i mean metal gear is done i I want metal gear to be done but castlevania that's a story that can continue forever because of the way they structure it and the way they do the games if i ever wanted to see more castlevania um it's just it's not going to happen as long as konami's getting thrown under the bus that said you know we got bloodstain coming out i was just about to bring that up yeah yeah so we got bloodstain coming out which you know god knows i'm super excited for and that might actually just be the spiritual successor to Castlevania and we'll get more and more bloodstained as the you know years go by so I'm just saying though from like a fan perspective if you ever want to see more Konami property come out it, it's it, it was looking pretty grim already and it's just getting worse with all this stuff happening however as a fan of Kojima and a supporter of Kojima yeah I mean I, I don't mind Konami getting shit on so it's like I said it's really bittersweet it's kind of it's kind of a weird pill weird, weird pill to pill, swallow yeah. for me yeah um, one other thing I'll say real quick about it is uh, in a uh, AMA that uh, Jeff did afterwards, mm. they actually asked him, someone asked him why he did what he did. And he is quoted saying, it just broke my heart that he couldn't be with us. Something had to be said. I didn't tell anyone on the show team what I was going to say, and it wasn't rehearsed. Later on, he was also asked uh, when he knew about the situation to which he replied. We found out in advance, but there was an ongoing dialogue for quite a while. Hideo did watch the show in Tokyo, and he enjoyed it. Just wish he could have been with us. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a bummer, because, like, Konami now joins a long list of game developers that are just shitting the bed. Just, like, absolutely committing social and media suicide by just making dumbass mistakes. Like, I know I've criticized Nintendo for being like this for a long time, and now Sony joins the ranks of just companies that just don't seem to be listening to consumer feedback. And in many cases, straight up ignoring it. And, like, the the decisions that we're seeing coming out of Konami, this included, are just some of the weirdest shit that's just, like, really confusing to me. Um, that, yeah, go ahead. I was just, I just, like, my thing is, I just don't understand. Like, I just, I can't fathom it. I can't find like like this was a game. This was a guy who has done a shit ton of stuff for them over the years. Yeah, I know that apparently there were some internal struggles with him and some other people and stuff like that. But this was his game. Mm-hmm. This was his game that was getting awarded an award. Why bar him from that? Like it's just that that that's that's it's it's frustrating to be honest. Like it's just it's it's very upsetting. Yeah, and I agree. Chase got anything on that one? Uh. 
Yeah, like I'm I'm kind of torn like with with you guys, but but if I had to choose absolutely one side, I would I, I'm with the guy. I'm glad he called him out because they're how petty do you have to fucking be to not let him come accept an award on, exactly. on your behalf that literally made you millions of dollars. So yeah. I mean, it's it's just a damn award. They didn't even come get it. They had to get Sutherland to do it. Yep. So like, why couldn't he be there? They're just being they're just being assholes. That's that's all there's to it to me. Yeah, and I agree. So I'm glad he called them out. And I think this is a, the last thing I want to say about it anyway is uh, that I feel like a lot of this is probably Konami on damage control. Like they don't want Kojima getting there out there and saying anything negative about the company, and in the process they're just getting everybody else to say it for him. You know, like, yeah. like they're they're causing they're drawing so much attention to themselves that it's just like the opposite effect. But yeah, yeah that's all I got. It's sad, sad time for Konami fans. Yeah, I agreed. Um, but I mean, I think that was the major thing we really wanted to discuss about um, the video game awards, right? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, that was the biggest that's... thing. Basically, I mean, Witcher won Game of the Game of the Year, and that was like the only other big. Uh, Metal Gear got Best uh, Action Game, wasn't it? Yeah, something like so, that. So, you know, as a Metal Gear fan, I'm glad to see that happen. Then Witcher beat out Fallout, I, Metal Gear, and something I else. Would, I would, I would say that I was quite <laughs> surprised to see Witcher win Game of the Year. But that being said, I haven't played it, so I can't really judge. I've as, heard nothing but good things about it from yeah, customers at my store. That's so, what I was gonna so. say. As much praise and, as I've seen CD Projekt Red get, it didn't surprise me a bit. And I own it, so maybe one day. They I'll also play it. won Developer of the Year too, didn't they? <laughs> I think they did. Probably. I'm yeah. almost certain they did. Yeah. I think, so, I think they tied. I think they, uh, you know, tied some fans in with the whole free DLC thing that came along with the uh, Witcher Three. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all in all, you know, congrats to them. Uh, I, I will definitely need to play that game now because game of the year i mean come on uh, but uh let's <laughs> go ahead shut down the wow servers maybe I'll yeah i was gonna go ahead and just quit playing wow but no <laughs> we'll go ahead into i think the final topic we really want to discuss tonight um the uh, final fantasy 7 remake yeah uh, who in their ben, right mind would be interested in that yeah, it's you not know six, what? let's just so talk about wow <laughs> yeah let's talk about wow for the rest of the let's time talk about transmog for <laughs> how do i transmog myself to look like uh Cloud jeff keighley um, Jeff <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I know a lot of us have been pumped since it was announced, you know, and uh, mostly uh, we've all had several burning questions on our mind, which is basically what it can boil, be boiled down to is how much is going to end up changed? Like how much of the gameplay mechanics are going to end up changed? How much of the story is going to end up changed? And uh, we've been sort of speculating on that based on gameplay uh, reveals. But the uh, the biggest thing that we have heard recently that really impacts that is um, Square's incentive or intention to release this as an episodic series. So um, I'll tell you how I feel about it. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if I'm terribly worried, right? Like, because I know the <laughs> reasoning behind it. Like, who else has heard the reasoning behind it? I have not, so go ahead and, and fill us in on okay, that. Okay, so here's, here's their reasoning behind it. I've got a link right there that you can uh, follow for you guys. That's the GameSpot article. I can link okay. that in the, in the uh, description as well. But basically, their explanation is, we want, to put, we want to put a lot of work into this. Like, And I understand that, because they're going from a, a top-down game with, like, like 2D drawn environments to a game that can be fully explored in 3D. And so their perspective is we want to be able to take as much time and resources as we want to fully flesh this world out. And the best way for us to do that is to release it episodically. And I think a lot of people, their concern is, well, like that, that kind of makes it sound like, like a Telltale game or something, right? Like, it makes it sound more like a casual game, and it, and it harkens to that concern of, like, microtransactions and things like that, is are you trying to sell this to us in a weird bite-sized format? Whereas I see their point of view is, they're like, no, we just want to be able to focus very hard on each individual chapter of the story. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I saw was people, I, something I had been worried about was them removing some of the key things that made Final Fantasy VII so memorable in the first place. Like, I know this was a very strange scene, but the cross-dressing scene was a very memorable part of Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. And I was very worried about that. And they flat out said, if they didn't release it in segments like they're going to be doing, 
that that part wouldn't be in there. But that kind of stuff, that the kind of stuff that made Final Fantasy VII VII is going to be in there because they're doing it the way they're doing. It. Mm-hmm. If they if they if they released it all as one game, there would be so much cut stuff that it wouldn't be the same anymore. Yeah, and, and kind of mm-hmm. going off that, uh, a lot of people have been giving them hell over. Uh, they're like, "Well, look at The Witcher Three. That game is fucking enormous, and it's all on one disc. What the hell, Square?" And then people are like, "Well, if you look at The Witcher Three, they have lots of like reused like." I don't know what word for it. Assets, yes. They have tons of reused assets, which isn't a bad thing. Like, every place doesn't look the same, but, like, you know, they can reuse trees, bushes, you know, like, buildings in certain towns that might look the same or very similar, whereas if you look at Final Fantasy VII, there's no two places in that game that really look the same. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're going to have to put some serious development into their, their cities and then their, their overworld, and, you know, it's it, it would be tough to stick into one game, and, like, I'm starting to become a little more okay with it being cut up into pieces, but at the same time, I'm not, because, like, I get it. If, if they put it all into one game, they got to cut a lot of stuff, or, or they can't, it can't be as fleshed out as we want it to be. But then, that goes to over to being cut into pieces, I'm just like, man, like, you guys say you're going to add all this stuff, so it's got to be in, in, you know, chunks. We can't get it all at once, so... Like you, but you can't add so much that we can't recognize Final Fantasy VII anymore. You know, yeah. like they they can't add. They act like they're adding so much; it's ridiculous. But they, at the same time, they kind of can't because they can't just up and change the damn story. Like they they've got their story set. You know, it's ready to go. And to me, th- this is just like when Blizzard announced for um for StarCraft II. You know, it had to be cut up into three pieces. You know, uh, Wings of Liberty. Um, Heart of the Swarm and Legacy of the Void, and you may think, well, that's that's not so bad. Those games are like forty dollars a piece when they came out. Yeah, it's not so bad, but like I waited ten years for them to just announce StarCraft Two, and then it took five more years for those three games to come out. I sure as hell don't want to wait five years to play Final Fantasy Seven, a story I already know is how how it's going to end. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a pretty valid concern about how long it's going to take between chapters. And another concern I've had is a uh, so let's look at it this way. So the only the only thing I know to compare it to is a Telltale game. Uh, the way the Telltale games are released episodically. So you can you can buy the episodes individually, or you can just do what I do, which is wait for all of it to be out and then buy it, so that you don't have to wait for individual chapter to come out. But how long are we going to be waiting? Um, yeah. And then the other concern I have is okay. So let's look at Telltale games. Each episode of a Telltale game is its own self-contained game. Yes, your story carries over between each one, but like, there's no returning to previous areas. There's no real shared inventory. It's it, it's a story. It's a dialogue-based adventure game. So, are these episodes of Final Fantasy VII going to be very self-contained and linear? Is it yes. going to be like? Is it going to be the Midgar chapter? Mm-hmm. And then it's going to be... I don't remember the names of the other places, to be yeah, honest. They, but like, they've already come out and said that each game is going to be a full-fledged Final Fantasy game. Yeah, and so like the only thing I'm concerned about is that is that going to completely eliminate the open-world element of this? Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I, I personally... Like I feel like they do it just the same way Final Fantasy VII was originally done. It was on three different discs, but that didn't pre- being yeah. on disc two didn't prevent you from going to places that was on disc one. And, and that's my hope is that it'll f- basically function in the same way. I honestly it's... feel like it, it. People when they when they hear episodic, they're thinking that it's going to be thirteen episodes. Yeah, or I don't. Seven. I feel like three or four at the most. Yeah, I honestly, like hope it's three. Yeah. If it's three, that's perfect. I hope it's three, and each one is named <laughs> disc one, disc two, and disc three. I Nothing would make really me cute. happier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for that me, it said, all depends on. For me, it all depends on how they're going to process the episodes or process the game in general, well, and then valid. like, and then like the release schedule. Because <clears throat> I can understand their side of it. You know, they're wanting to get as much work put into it as possible. They want to make sure we get as good of an experience as we've hoped for ever since we've been wanting the remake, which has been, God, it feels like 25 years now. Um, uh, that said, like, I don't want them to overprice. Like, I mean, if you're going to charge 60 bucks per episode, that's Obviously might be a little wrong. too, yeah, yeah, might be a little too bogus. Now they're charging, if they charge, you know, 30 to 40, 30 is a little low. If they charge about 40 for each episode, that's a little bit more understandable. If there's and only then, like three or four. 
Yeah. But, yeah. Or or they might I mean I doubt they'll do this, but they might do like a season pass type of thing where you just buy the whole thing up front and you just download it. I doubt they do that, but that would be neat if that's how they did it. Yeah, that's what I'm um, looking for. Yeah, at I the same time see because that being the way it goes. Yeah. And at the same time, because they're doing it epi- uh, by episode, uh, it gives them a chance to put as much work into it as they can, but not make us wait because they'll give us the first episode. We can be playing that while they're continuing to work on the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're still able to put time into it and not have like a deadline. I have a rush schedule trying to have a full finished project or a product out. So yeah. that could definitely, definitely, uh, pay off so to me it just kind of depends on those factors um as long as the pricing is reasonable and they're not putting two to three years between episodes then yeah. i can i can get behind the the structure that they're using for this yeah, i think the episodes need to come out once a year uh-huh. which, which is very going to be very hard for them to do because yeah. it is a final fantasy game and it is square enix so. i didn't consider for a second they would take that long like, like at all, because again, like I wasn't looking at it the way you were looking at it, which is three or four episodes at the most. I was looking at it as being like seven episodes. Yeah. So like a year a piece would be ridiculous to me, but maybe I'm framing it differently than everybody else is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And something like, else. Oh, go ahead. I was exa- I could see them doing, um, like I said, like two or three, or like, like like three or four episodes, and like like this may be a little long for the first episode, but I could see like the first episode like ending with uh, you just cross the lake, you get into the cave and holy shit, there's a snake on that spike. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Roth did that. Oh shit. (laughs) Is that just how it's going to (laughs) close with the voice actor for cloud? Just being like, Oh shit. Like, like, would that not be a cool way? But like, all this point, up until this point, you've, you've seen Sephiroth, you've heard about him, he's done some badass shit. But then you finally get across this lake where this big ass snake had been fucking your world. Mm-hmm. And then when you finally get across it, there's just one impaled on a spike. You're like, oh uh, shit. I he's forgotten all about that <laughs> Um. So. Well then, uh, I kind of want to bring up some of the actual like mechanics that we saw in the trailer then. Um, because like th- most of these concerns are more to do with the story. Right. Um, but then like, like I was, I think me and Chase both were sort of like, is this going to still be turn based or is this going to be action based or what? And then sure enough, it's like, it's, it's more like, I guess like Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy 13. So how do you guys feel that this is going to work out? Like you do, do you feel that that's going to be too much of a change or you think it's going to feel natural or what? Cause it looks good to me. I think it looks, looks good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the fighting system and everything, because, I mean, you obviously don't want to have the exact same game just remastered. Yeah, I agree. And actually, my district manager, uh, he recently posted a um, thing on Facebook saying, you know, he would love to replay the Final Fantasy games. He just doesn't want to go back through the the fight system. He doesn't want to take the time. If you could just play the game without doing the fight system, that'd be great. This is a... It looks fun. It looks kind of like Kingdom Hearts, kind of like, which I haven't played the 15 demo yet, but mm-hmm. kind of what I've seen from the 15 demo, it kind of looks similar to that. I mean, it's a, it's a new fight system. It looks looks fun. It looks like it's uh, it's obviously a break from the traditional fight system before, but we're kind of past the, the turn-based thing now at this this point in time. And this looks this looks pretty good. I, I, I like how this is looking so far. Well, plus something that we all forget is that, like, 6 and 7 were both, like, if I'm not mistaken, the first in the series to be less turn-based than the others because they had the active time battle system. Mm-hmm. And so, like, they had that system of, like, the bars built, filling up over time and you not being able to sit still or else you would lose your turn. So, like, I feel like they're going to factor elements of that into this real-time battle system um, with right. like, with shit building up and stuff. Like, we saw some of the actual, like, cool powers in the trailer, and these are things that I kind of feel like you probably won't actually have by this point in the story, but I could be wrong. Um, because, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, like, Cloud has, like, some basic magic attacks, like, right off the bat. But I don't know if he's going to have some of these, like, crazy things that we saw in the trailer, like him doing some Ars Arcana looking bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I think it was more of just a proof of concept. I think he actually has, if I'm not mistaken, I think he actually has pretty basic attacks at the start of 7. And, I mean, I don't think anybody has magic until they get materia. I might be wrong. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he was pulling off some some crazy shit in this just trailer. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. I don't, don't recall being able to do that <laughs> early in Final Fantasy VII. But, uh, hey, you know, it's it, then again, you have to remember it's it's a presentational just yeah. trailer. You know, it's I, not going to be the final thing. I am kind of of a uh, opposite mindset of that. Um, 
we if you've played Crisis Core and stuff like that, you've seen how badass like Zack and them were. And I know Cloud, I'm not going to say Cloud at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII is anywhere to Zack's level at the end of Crisis Core. But I feel like I feel like just because it was a turn-based system back in the well, not turn-based, but active time battle system back in the day, we just didn't get to see what Cloud actually did. Kind of like you know Darth Vader in the original Star Wars movies. He looks like he just kind of kind of humbles himself around and just barely fights, but he's kind of a badass. Those movies just couldn't show it. And we see a lot of that in the new comics too, which I don't want to. I don't want to make a tangent, but like that is something that is definitely explored in other mediums. So, uh, but yeah, I feel I feel like Cloud will be kind of that badass from the get go. Yeah, fair enough. Um, something else that I'm excited to see. I know I was uh, skeptical at first of whether or not you would still be controlling three people in a party, but I think you guys had confirmed for me that you know it it does appear that we're switching out between like Cloud and Barrett and stuff, stuff yeah. like that. So that's exciting. You mean you mean Cloud and and buffed up Blade? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i did not realize that's who he was reminding me of <laughs> yeah, like they've actually from what i've read they've actually confirmed that he is going to be rocking those sunglasses for the entire game <laughs> oh my god what? i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember him wearing those sunglasses he didn't he, didn't. he looks fine except for the sunglasses like there's no reason to be wearing sunglasses in a fucking it was, like energy reactor <laughs> I mean, it, I from what they, they explained that they were just like it's just a it, we we put sunglasses on them we really liked it it's what we're going with <laughs> pretty like much is what they said because like they're going to make him into like a cyborg and he has to wear them so you don't see his robot eyes that's what i'm thinking <laughs> well you know that what that actually reminds me of is a question that me and chase had had which was um are is your is your equipment going to show up like are oh, your equipment God. changes going to show up I hope oh yeah so. i hope so especially like weapon changes at least yeah i feel like i feel like weapon changes will i don't feel like anything else will yeah it wouldn't bother me if armor didn't because that would that would change the way those iconic characters look too much to me uh -huh. but i seriously hope that like when i get any of the other swords other than the buster sword that it changes when i'm in game like playing swinging it around especially ultima weapon and that damn mop and the damn mop yeah <laughs> hell yes i'm also but... excited to see what uh uh red 13 looks like because he's my favorite oh, character yeah I'd forgotten all about Red 13. I, mean, I feel like most of them will look a lot like uh, their Advent Children appearances. Uh, Speaking of Advent Children, um, a lot of people are really worried they're going to include that in the, the last episode of it. Like like they're just going to combine Final Fantasy VII and Advent Children, which I, I, don't I, I would that. be fine if it were optional like a, DLC, but yeah, like I really don't want it to be part of the game. Yeah, if it's a bonus, a bonus mission, that'd be fun. Yeah. I don't want it to be the final you know mission in the uh, crater at the end of the game. Like, a lot of people, and kind of on the same vein as Advent Children and stuff, a lot of people have also been, like, complaining, like, oh, I'm just afraid they're going to change something with the story or something like that. And so, the way I explained it to one of my friends the other day was, I feel like they will, they won't simplify the story. That's not really the word I'm looking for. They will just simply explain it better. Well, yeah, it's, it's like I mentioned to you earlier, Ian, before we started the podcast. Uh, I didn't know this until, I think, yesterday. I might have learned it today. I don't remember. But um, uh, there's a lot of stuff missing from our version of Final Fantasy yeah. VII because it wasn't translated right. Yeah, and that that's part of the extra content is we're gonna actually get the full game this time. Yeah, um, and that said, like, are we getting Ares or Aerith? That's probably. a good question. <laughs> I'm I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure they'll they'll make her Aerith. Not because she's 99 percent sure they're just gonna remove her from the game. Because <laughs> she's the, the, she cause that kind of goes that kind of goes back to something I was just about to the point I was about to make though Final Fantasy VII is such a is is the biggest Final Fantasy it it, yeah. it has so many different spinoffs and stuff like that if they were to change the story of this game it would fuck up everything else yeah and we have everything else in English other than this game calling her Aerith so I feel like they will change that in this game to also be Aerith yeah, yeah. I do I, I yeah. agree with you the um, same thing with everything else pretty much. And on the topic of all that content that was left out because it wasn't fully translated, um, I know I'm an outlier when it comes to my opinion of Final Fantasy VII, but like even what we got, I don't feel like was translated well. Because I feel like th that if you go back and play Final Fantasy VII, there's so much of the plot that is convoluted and confusing that I feel like could be tuned up to make a little more sense. Yeah, so that's what like, I was saying, like with them explaining it better. Yeah, because like, you know... Um, uh, oh God! What was I saying? Um, 
a lot of people praise this as being like the sh- the Shakespearean video game epic, and to the the to the nostalgic, I'm sure it is. But then to me, a person that didn't play it until I was an adult, I was just like, what is this? Like, what the hell is this? So I do hope that the game's, the game's narrative can be modernized in such a way that it maybe expose itself, exposes itself a little bit better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. But, um, all in all, like, I think when it boils down to it, I am just so excited for it. Yes. Like, there's, like, I, there have just, like, there have been times where I've just been sitting here just thinking about random scenes from the original game that I'm like, oh my god, that's gonna be beautiful on the remake. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the, like, two parts that really stick out to me. One of the most beautiful scenes in the original, in, in the original, uh, was the, uh, when you're escaping from the northern ca- uh, caverns and the weapons wake up. Yeah. Yeah. That scene remade. Holy fuck. Like, it's gonna be this beautiful. Something else about, about the, all the people complaining. Like, this, this doesn't give Square Enix any kind of excuse to, to fuck up the game we love. But they can release this any way they want, and every single person who's bitching is still gonna buy it. Yep, you're this shit's gonna right. print money for them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Well, right. I'm not terribly worried about it anymore, and I, I personally think that them releasing it episodically was them going, "All right, there's a lot of pressure on us. What do we have to do to make this the game they're gonna expect?" Like, and if that's what they have to do, then by all means, do it. Yeah, agreed. But, um. I think I think that about wraps that up. Uh, anybody else got anything to to add on? Uh, mostly, I I want to say this to anybody that has listened to this entire thing. Thank you so much. I know we don't have as many fans on our podcast yet as we do on our YouTube channel or our Twitch, but we can fix that. I want you to tell your friends, tell your family, tell your mom. Make your mom watch it. Make your relationship worse than it already is. Make things real awkward because uh, we would really appreciate that. And thank you so much for your loyalty. Oh. We, we want you to be sitting down for your Christmas dinner with your family, and we want your mother to be like, so about these blow-up guys. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I want that just to be the most awkward conversation you've ever had. About these blow-up guys. Why can't you be more like them? They're doing something with their lives. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to literally whip your phone out in the middle of prayer and just start one of our videos. <laughs> 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 Dear Lord, and, um, we thank you for this I'm, I'm Christmas not going harvest. To <laughs> we thank you for this Christmas harvest. <laughs> God oh, damn. Man. Um but yeah, uh so yeah, um we're we're brought up. Um if you want to find us in any other means, we all have Twitters and Twitches and MySpace and things of that nature, and Ian will go around and fill you in on how to find us. I mean, I ain't going to fill you in, but I can call out everybody and they can fill you in. Call Rhett, how will we find you? Okay, well, my cell phone number is <laughs> not going to be disclosed on this. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Cosplay, T-E-N-S-E-I-K-E-N Cosplay, all one word. Find me on Twitter at I am Tensaken, well, all one word. And on Twitch at twitch.tv slash I am Tensaken. All right, Chase. All right, um... You can find me on Facebook as just Bro Up Games. I'd really appreciate it if everybody could go and follow that. It's just Bro hyphen Op Space Games, Facebook.com. Um, just search it. I guess you'll find it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because the, the URL's like Yeah, long the URL's like super long and yeah. it's got numbers and weird shit in it. But, uh, and as far as uh, Twitch goes, I do have a Twitch. Uh, it's Super X64. Um, but. I think we're going to start changing the way we stream, and I may start directly streaming to our Bro Up Twitch channel, mm-hmm. which, if you're watching right now, is where you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> Congrats. Uh, the, we might have a set schedule coming in the near future, but don't quote me on that. Yeah. Hey, Jesse? Yeah, okay, so I'm finally just going to pick a gamer tag and stick with it. So you can find me uh, on Twitch as well as uh, JGATZB. So that's Jay Gatsby. I am probably going to stream. Everybody's happy because I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't decide on what uh, what handle I was going to go with, and I still haven't nailed that down to where I can use it on certain things like PlayStation Network and things like that. But that's that's what I'm going to go by. Um, that said, I will probably just stick to streaming on the Bro Op Live Twitch, which is uh, B R O O P L I V E. Um, and uh, I also run the Bro Up Twitter, which is going to be Bro Up Games, um, and that's me. That's how you get up with me. And um, once again, my name is Ian. I also go by Justice Cosplay or Justice Gaming. Uh, 
I have my Facebook page is www.facebook.com slash fight on for justice, or you can just look up Justice Cosplay. It's the best way to get in touch with me. Um, I also have a Twitch, but I'm not even going to bother giving that out right now because uh, I don't ever stream. And if I do start streaming, I'm probably, if since we are changing our uh, rules about how we're going to be doing our streaming, I'm probably going to start, if I do stream, streaming straight to where you are right now. Yeah. So uh, just, you know, like, subscribe, love. Hate. I don't care. Uh, anyways, but yeah, so that's that's main ways to find me. Um, but I mean, that's about it for me. Uh, does anybody else have any closing remarks for the night? Whatever you do, don't stop watching. Never stop Never. watching. <laughs> I got nothing. No. Yeah, if, the, nothing. If, the, if this video gets below like 16 viewers, the world explodes. Uh -huh. So we're already all dead. Just uh, happy holidays, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, there, real talk, yeah. Coming up, absolutely. Happy holidays. Uh, we all do. If, if you are watching this video, we do thank you <laughs> from the most bottom of our hearts that you are taking time out of like your holidays. From the scrotums of our hearts. From the scrotums of our hearts, you are taking your time from out of your holiday to come and watch our videos and be here for us, and we all appreciate that. So have a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah. All that stuff. Whatever doesn't offend you. Yeah. <laughs> non denominational <laughs> atheist celebration of acceptance for other people. Uh, getting crunk at New Year's, whatever you do. <laughs> have a good time doing it. Be safe. Uh, but all in all, guys, uh, this was Bro Up Radio for the night, and we're signing off. Have a good night. Hey, thank you guys. Good night. Bye. See ya.